All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about motion problems. In other words, uh, the relationship of distance, rate, and time. And as you can see in the slide, distance is equivalent to the rate multiplied by the time. So if we look at our first problem, it says you've got Wyatt and John. They leave uh, their home in Concord at the same time. They travel in opposite directions. Wyatt's going 80 miles an hour. John's going 72 miles an hour. And you want to know how many hours will, in how many hours, will they be 790 miles apart? So if I draw a picture of this, we've got a central location that they're leaving from. They're traveling in opposite directions. And we want to know how long is it going to take before there's 790 miles between them. So we're going to be looking at two different distances, two different rates, and two different, or same amount of time actually. All right. So what I like doing is setting up a chart and we'll label that chart distance equals rate times time. And we'll record information about Wyatt and John. So it says they leave at the same time, which means when they're 790 miles apart, they've been traveling at the same time. But the problem doesn't say anything about how long that time is. So we're going to call each of those X. So they're both unknown. I know there are two rates. One's 80 miles an hour and one is 72 miles an hour. And at this point, what I do is I notice, since I have two pieces of information and a relationship between those two pieces of information, I just multiply those together to get an expression for the distance each has traveled. So why it's gone 80x miles, and John's gone 72x miles. Now I look at the picture over here, and let's call one Wyatt and one John. Turns out Wyatt's distance and John's distance has to total 790. So that's where I write my equation. I say Wyatt's distance plus John's dif distance is equal to 790. But I do that now in terms of one variable, x. So Wyatt's 80x. John is 72x. And those are equal to 790. These are like terms, so I add those up, so that's 152. X is equal to 790. We're going to divide both sides by 152. And it turns out we get a decimal, it's not a whole number, so we get X is equal to, after I round, 5.2. Hours and they asked how long is it going to take, and that's the X amount of hours that each traveled, and 5.2 is our actual answer in this case. So now we can move on. So here's another situation where Antonio leaves home after three hours. Andrew takes off and realizes that Antonio left his wallet behind. Andrew speed 42 miles an hour, and he caught up to Antonio in an hour and a half. And how fast is Antonio traveling? So we've got Antonio going along this way. We've got Andrew. Going this way as well. We want to know when they catch each other. We know that in this case, Andrew travels 42 miles per hour. And we don't know how fast Antonio is traveling. And that's what we're going to try to figure out. So, Again, I like to set up my chart. And as you can see from the picture, I don't know Antonio's 
Great. So I'm going to call Antonio X ray Andrew travels at 42 miles an hour. Now, it says that at this point, Andrew's speed was 42 miles an hour and he caught up to Antonio in 1.5 hours. So it says how long Andrew's been traveling, so that's 1.5. Now, if you notice, Andrew left three hours later on his motorcycle. If he catches up in 1.5 hours, that means he's traveled a total of 4.5 hours. So in this case, we can multiply across. We have 4.5 x for Antonio. Andrew, we simply multiply 42 times 1.5. That's going to get us 63. We want to know how fast Antonio was traveling. So how fast was he riding his bike? And as you can see in the picture, they leave from the same place, and then when they catch up to each other, their distances are the same. So what I can do in this case now is set Antonio's distance equal to Andrew's distance. So in that case, 4.5x equaling 63. I divide both sides by 4.5. I take 63 divided by 4.5, I get 14. So what does X represent in this case? X represents a rate, so this is miles per hour. And that's Antonio's speed, and that's exactly what they wanted us to find out. So this is our answer. Let's take a look at another. It says at 12, a plane leaves Washington for Chicago traveling at 420 miles an hour. And then a second plane leaves Washington at one, traveling 400 miles per hour. And the planes end up in Chicago at the same time. We want to know what time they arrive. So in this case, this guy leaves at 12 p.m. And this guy leaves at 1 p.m. He's traveling. The first guy travels 240 miles per hour. And the second guy travels at 400 miles per hour. Let's fill all our chart out to the best that we can. We've got distance, rate, and time. I know the two rates, 240 and 400. Now the time traveled doesn't say how long each of them travel in total, but I do know that one leaves an hour later than the other. So what's that mean relative to the total traveling time? If you leave an hour later, that means you, you actually are traveling an hour less. So let's call X our slower plane, and our faster plane leaves an hour later, so he travels an hour less. Multiplying across, because I have my rate and my time, so I can multiply to get an expression for my distance. Get 240x, and I get 400 times the quantity of x minus 1. So in this case, I look at the relationship between distances. They both left from Washington. They both end up in Chicago. Their distances are the same. So plane 1 is equal to plane 2 in distance. So in this case, 240x is equal to 400 times the quantity of x minus 1. I can distribute through, get 400x minus 400 
is equal to 240x. I want to get all the x's to one side of the equation, so I'll subtract 400x from both sides. That leaves me with uh, 160 negative x, and that's going to equal negative 400. So next I'll divide both sides by negative 160. If I take 400, divide that by 160, I get 2.5. What does x represent in this case? x represents the time the slower plane has traveled. So this is 2.5 hours. And they wanted to know what time will they arrive. Well, we know that this first place left at, or first plane left at 12 p.m. And if the whole flight took two and a half hours, I add two and a half hours to 12 p.m. and I get 2, 30 p.m. is when the plane arose. So in this problem, we have this guy Tyson driving to town at 36 miles an hour. And then turning around and going back, 48 miles an hour. We know his total driving time is four hours. So if I were to take and fill out a chart, once again, distance equal to the rate times the time. My rate is 36 and 48. Call that there and back. And in this case, I know the total driving time is four hours, but I don't know the time going either direction. Let's just say, for instance, it took me an hour to get there. How long would it take to get back? Well, if it was four hours total, three hours to get back. If it took me two hours to get there, then it would take two hours to get back. And getting both those numbers by taking the amount of time it took me to get there, subtracting from four, and that's how long it takes me to get back. So... Since I don't know how long it takes me to get there, I'm going to call that x. And then if I subtract that amount from 4, I get how long it took me to get back. I have the rate and the time. I can multiply those together to get my distance. So I have 36x and then 48 times the quantity of 4 minus x to get back. And if I look at the picture, I notice the distance there equals the distance back. So I'll set those two equal to each other. Here are my two distances. Distance there, 36x. Distance back, 48 times 4 minus x. So 36x equals, distribute, I get 192 minus 48x. I'm going to get all my x's to one side, so add 48x to both sides. We get 192 is equal to 84x. Divide 84 to both sides. I take 192, divide that by 84. I get a decimal around it. So let's go 2.29 and that ends up being hours. And that's to get there. And the question asked, if total driving time is four hours, how far is it from the house? Well, in this case, our answer got us a time. If I want the distance, I have to plug this back in to the chart to get 
a distance. So what I have in this case is I have 36 times 2.29 will get me a distance. So if I multiply 36 times 2.29, I end up with 82.44, and that's going to be miles. And that's going to be my answer. Let's do one more. So in this problem, Dave leaves at 10 a.m., traveling 50 miles an hour, and 11.30, Javier leaves going in the same direction, 45 miles an hour. So here's Dave. And here's Javier going in the same direction, and we want to know at what time will they be a total of 100 miles apart. So this distance right here is 100. So in this case, we have again distance equals rate times time. We've got some rates. This is Dave and this is Javier. Dave's 50 miles an hour. Javier's 45 miles an hour. Dave leaves at 10 a.m., but that doesn't mean he travels 10 hours. So he travels some unknown amount of time. And at 11.30, Javier takes off. So he leaves an hour and a half later, which means he's traveling an hour and a half less time. So I'm going to go minus 1.5. Now, I multiply across, I get 50x here. It gets his, his distance expression and 45 times the quantity of x minus 1.5 here. And we notice these two distances aren't equal. Dave's actually longer. Dave, actually, is equal to Javier's distance plus 100. If you can see that in the picture, you can just write the equation to explain that picture. So now I'll take 50x for Dave's distance, set that equal to Javier's distance, 45 times x minus 1.5 and add 100 to that. Take and distribute. So I have 50x equaling 45x. Minus 45 times 1.5 is 67.5 plus 100. I'm going to subtract 45 from both sides. Gives me 5x on the left. And if I take 100 minus 67.5, I end up with 32.5. Divide both sides by 5. And I end up with 6.5. Now once again, that means x is 6.5, so that's a time, that's an hour. And they want to know, when will they be 200 miles apart? So if this is 6.5 hours after the first guy, 6.5 hours after 10 a.m. is 4.30. Alright, that should outline pretty much every type of problem you're going to have to do. Write your lesson summary, solve these two problems, and we'll discuss these tomorrow in class.